this is this is part two in the series, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses and the Word of God. Thank you. Now, in the last lesson, I spent a significant amount of time trying to comprehensively, because darkness does not comprehend it, what Jesus was before he became a man. And we got to the bottom of it. In the beginning was the Word. When Jesus spoke in the beginning, when he said, in the beginning, let there be light, the sound that came out of his mouth was to be Jesus. That Word became Jesus manifest in the flesh, so that when Jesus spoke, it was no different to when God spoke, because Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. Now, just going a little bit further, if we go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, God, who at various times and spoke in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, he has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. Now, how did he do that? Because the Word became flesh. When Jesus spoke, it was God speaking to us. It was God's Word whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Now, how did he make the worlds? Because when God spoke, his word was to become Jesus. It was, was not Jesus at that time, but God put his word into Mary's womb, which formed into, as it were, as the seed, the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was God's word. That's how he, through whom also he made the worlds. Because his origin was the sound that came out of God's mouth. And that's how he spoke to us by his son. Because the origin now became a living person. I'm sure you would agree it's very difficult to try and explain who Jesus was. But I'm pretty sure that the, and I hope you agree, that the Bible does a good enough job of doing that without us getting too involved. Because in Colossians 1 verse 15, this is a very, very good ex explanation of who Jesus was in a very short string of words. This is explaining Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God. He was the invisible God in the image of a man. The firstborn over all creation. Now what does that mean? Well, he created creation, didn't he? And he became a part of his creation himself. He became fragile. He became a part of his creation. And this all has to do with the subject of is God's evil? Is God evil? Because until you can understand that God became a man, then you'll never understand how evil and good work because you have to realize that Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. He was the invisible God in human form. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Now, that's <clears throat> attributing to the fact that Jesus or God's word created all these different things, including the angels. That's why Jesus was not an angel. He was the Word of God. All things were created through him. How were they created through him? Because when God spoke, Jesus was God's Word at that time. But he wasn't Jesus at that point. He was still God's raw, powerful, thunderous Word, creative Word, through him and for him. And he is before all things, because he was the Word, not the person sitting up there, God's Word. And in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. So just let me say that again. Colossians 1 verse 15. And I don't think arguing the point's really going to help. He is the invisible God in human form. He is the image of the invisible God. He was God manifest in the flesh. Let's go back to John 1, shall we? And um, where does it here? This is another fantastic explanation of who Jesus was. And the Word, and this is what I've been trying to explain, and the Word became flesh. The sound that came out of God's mouth when Jesus was formed, conceived and formed by God's Word, not by man, miraculously, when Jesus was born, guess what? He was the living God now in a body. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us and they beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten father full of grace and truth now if jesus wasn't god take your bible and burn it you may as well burn it because you will never ever get to the full understanding and fair understanding of what the Bible is about. You'll be misled and it will just not give you the peace that you need to be involved in this 
if you can't come to the conclusion that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, I don't know if this is fair, but I'm just going to look at what the Jehovah Witnesses Bible says about this. Bear with me, please. Now, I've come to jw.org, and there's some pretty good artwork there, which is what they're pretty well renowned for. I'm selecting the chapter that I want to read. This is how you research. I don't use the jw.org, only unless I'm specifically researching something. And now we're going to look at what they have to say in their translation. In the beginning was the Word. They're happy with that. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. We know why the Word was with God, because it was God's mouth, God's sound, wasn't it? It was the sound that came out of God's mouth, wasn't it? And the Word was a God. And that's where they fell over. That's where they fell over. Because what they're saying now is, see where it says, and the Word, hang on, what have we done? Oh, we're not familiar with this site. We'll get rid of that, shall we? No. Bear with me. This is how you battle when you research. And the Word was a God. So what they're saying is that this word was a separate God to Elohim. He was a God instead of the God. So he's try they're trying to separate the, um, the plurality of God by trying to make him two. They're trying to take God's word, right? What I don't understand about this translation um, for my listeners is they're acknowledging that um, the word is divine, that it's part of Elohim. And they're going on to do this, that it was with God. Well, it had to be with God because the sound that came out of God's mouth was his word. It was God's word. But I don't think there was a separate God inside God's word at all. I think God's word was God's word, like my word is my word and your word is your word. My word's not a separate part of me. It's not another part of me. The part that a lot of people miss, and this is where I've gone to great lengths to try and explain, the sound that come out of God's mouth, like the sound that comes out of your mouth, is you. But I can't make my sound become a being. God did. And we, we read it before, and we'll, we'll see what these people say. So they've fallen over there, and they've done it deliberately because they're trying to make Jesus into a separate God. But Jesus wasn't Jesus before he was conceived. He was the sound that came out of God's mouth. Now, the sound that came out of God's mouth was not another God. It was God's sound. It was his word. It was his personal self. So what they're doing is that they're corrupting, they're perverting who God was. And I don't know why. You can go into a big study of this and you'll find that there were spiritualists and all sorts of people involved in this, but they couldn't and wouldn't accept that God's word was his word. Basically, what they're saying is God's word was not God's word, it was another God, which is very, very, very corrupted, isn't it? It's corrupted. And you don't have to be a scholar to work that out. If you look at it, you've got Elohim's divinity there. You've got Elohim's divinity here. Now, if the word was a God, right, and it's got the same level as divinity as this word here with the, um, with the capital W, why has God all of a sudden here got a small g? You can't have a capital W for this word and then turn it into a small g because it takes away the power of this word in, what's it called, in, um, uh, in a linguistic it's a linguistic corruption. It's, it's, just, it's just deceptive. Like, why didn't they then have this as a, as a small w? That should have been a small w. But you, what they've decided to do, and I don't understand it, is they've just gone plump and thrown in a God. So if you're not a scholar, um, and I'm not a linguistic scholar, I think you can see that somebody's just decided that we're not going to accept that God's word was God's word. We're going to separate that. Now, what they've done is gone one step further in verse 2, and, they've, and I don't know how I've got onto this, but we may as well continue. This one was in the beginning with God. Now, I've gone to great lengths in the first talk to show you that it wasn't a one. It was a word. It was a word. Now, this one was not one. The one they're talking about wasn't one until it was conceived, until, he, until God's word was conceived in Mary. So what they're trying to do now is make Jesus a person before he became a person. That's a pretty fair explanation of what they're trying to do. And this one was in the beginning with God. No, no, no. There was no other personality in the beginning with God. It was God's will being birthed through his word by the Spirit to create things. There was no other one. There was only one Elohim, singular, 
working in his plurality to produce creation. Not two minds. Basically, there was not two minds at work in creation. There was one mind, and that was the mind of God. All things came into existence through him. Now, <clears throat> you can see the descent. You can see the disintegration. As it goes deeper, it actually separates away from God. And now it is saying that the things came into existence through this other being. Well, there was no other being involved in creation. There was only God and his word and his spirit. Can you see that? So, But now they've actually gone down and created, an, to, at this point in verse 3, another being. And apart from him, they're trying to make Jesus Jesus before he was born. And it's a very sad and misleading and very evil, might, might I say, corruption of the original text. And apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. Now this him here should be God, Elohim. But they're making out that there was somebody else there when God created the heavens and the earth. Now I would imagine right now that the hair on the back of your neck would be standing up because that's a fair, what could you say, commentary on what they've done to disrevel the text. There was no other being present at the time of creation except Elohim, the singular God in plurality, when creation was made. It was God and his word and his spirit. There was no other being because Jesus didn't become a man. God didn't become a man until the fullness of time had come. Back in um, Galatians 4 verse 4. So there was no person as a Jesus or whatever they're trying to say here present with God except God himself and his sound and his breath. I really hope that helps you to understand what these people have tried to do here. They've tried to make another being present at creation and they're attributing that to Jesus. Now, another very sad mistake here is they're saying that this is Michael the Archangel if you follow their doctrines right through. Then this has to be Michael the Archangel because Jesus wasn't Jesus until he was born, was he? So again, there is such a sad and what would you say, uneducated corruption of this scriptures of this scripture that it beggars, it beggars why somebody would go to this length. I mean, you've just got to, again, string together all the foundations that they're laying these statements on, like Jesus was Michael the Archangel before he became Jesus. Michael the Archangel had nothing to do with creation. And I honestly believe poor old Michael the Archangel would be, would be oh my goodness, he'd be just shaking his head. And so would Jesus. So this is showing you how, how these people try and mislead others. They do not want, and they're proving it through this passage, Jesus to be God manifest in the flesh. They do not want the word to be God manifest in the flesh. Let's go a little bit further now. We may as well. Um, I hope you're enjoying this. Please comment. I'm putting a lot of time into this. And apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. Apart from God, there was no other person present when God brought this world into existence. What has come into existence by means of him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light is shining in the darkness, but the darkness has not overpowered it. Now that is, again, what they've done, it should be comprehended. It has to be, what, what this is, it's more of a, a word that's relative to understanding, not of overpowering. It's not a word of power here. It's a word of comprehension. It's a word of understanding. And these people haven't, and I'm going to say, they haven't overpowered the true translation. They've just corrupted it. And at this point, I'm going to mirror um, a short clip from a scholar who talks about this. Please allow me to insert this. Much our organization has published its own version of the Bible called the New World Translation. Dr. J.R. Manti, an eminent Greek scholar, was one of the authorities quoted out of context. The Watchtower Society has implied that he supports the New World Translation. Dr. Manti disagrees. I have never found any so-called translation that goes so far away from what the scripture actually teaches as these books published by Jehovah's Witnesses. They are so far away from what there is in the original Hebrew and the original Greek. It's deceptive because they deliberately changed words in a passage of scripture to make it fit into their doctrine. They distorted the scripture in many passages, scores and scores of passages in the New Testament, dealing with the deity of Christ especially. To lend credence to this translation, the Watchtower Society has deliberately misquoted a number of well-known Greek scholars. So if we go down to verse 13, they've lost their way again because they've gone back to the word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. Now that's enough to 
fully discredit these people, these translators, um, their use uh, or the way they've done that in those earlier verses. So the word became flesh. God's word became flesh. And that's the only way you can say it. And resided among us. There you go. God's word became flesh and resided among us. And we had a full view of his glory. There you go. You can't change the truth, can you? You can try, but you just can't. Because the Bible's, there's too much of it in the Bible. You can't, you can't, these people are crazy doing this. A glory such as belongs to, to an only begotten son. Oh my goodness. From a father. And he was full of divine favor and truth. Well, there you go. And so on and so forth. So we'll leave that now. Okay. So back to a standard translation, just to close on this. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God was Jesus' creator. God put his word into Mary's womb. And when that child was born, it was called Jesus of Nazareth. Now we're just going to come down to Matthew 1 verse 18, Christ born of Mary. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, so they hadn't had intimacy yet, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So who put the child in Mary's womb? And what was the child? It was God's word placed in Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit. Now we're talking about the Holy Spirit who contributed to the creation of the world. And this word and spirit have now been put in Mary's womb, in her seed, in her egg, and now they're going to become God manifest in the flesh. And the story goes on. Let's go. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. So Joseph knew that he hadn't put the baby there. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. There you go. It was the Holy Spirit that conceived the word of God in Mary's womb, in her egg. And she will bring forth a son. It was her son as well. And you shall call his name Jesus. There you go. This is when Jesus was being formed. He was not an angel. He was nothing else. He was the word of God now put in Mary's womb in her egg. For he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall bear with child and bear a son. And they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel, which is? Oh, I, I, I'm, listeners, I didn't see this coming. They're going to call his name Emmanuel, which is? Please say it. God with us. I'm going to say it and then you say it. Emmanuel, God with us. So who was Jesus? He was God with us. Now bear with me. Let's look at the Jehovah Witness Bible and see what they have to say about this passage. Bear with me, please. Okay, now these people, these, and if you look at the New World tra Translation, no scholar has put his name on it. And that was for good reason. It wasn't because they were humble and stuff. It was because when it all goes down, no one's going to be accountable for the lies. Anyway, we're down in Matthew 1 um, and verse 23 of the New World Translation. And it says, look, the virgin will become pregnant. How will she become pregnant? By the Holy Spirit and will give birth to a son. And they will name him Emmanuel. Well, they haven't tried to change this, have they? Which means, when translated, with us is God. What's that doing there? With us is God. So who was with them? Who was that baby? When that baby left Mary's womb and was born into the world, what was it? It was Emmanuel. It was God with us. It was with us is God. These people are so hopeless. I don't know how you could say then that Jesus wasn't God with us. With us is God. With us is, it's a definitive word, is God. So who was Jesus then, Jehovah Witnesses? He was God manifest in the flesh, wasn't he? Shouldn't that say it was Michael the Archangel with us? No, it can't say that because that's not true. So all the Jehovah Witnesses' doctrines just don't piece together. Now I've gone to great lengths to show my listeners who Jesus was, what he was before he became Jesus, and who he was when he actually did become a man. 
Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment if you watch it on Facebook. Like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.